welcome back to the channel we are at the minneapolis rv show and today we're going to be looking at couples campers if you've been following along you'll know over the last couple of years we've been renting out our travel trailers on rv share and outdoorsy uh, last year we sold our mallard and went down to one rig and i think it's time to add a second camper to our fleet again we're going to be taking our 2400 bunkhouse and moving that into full-time rentals um, and now we want to get a couple's camper more situated just for me and the wife to go camping uh, but we're also going to rent that one out as well uh, as far as budget you know we don't want to break the banks we kind of want to stay under thirty thousand dollars and get something that isn't too big something that um, could easily be towed by half tons but maybe something that could be towed by a mid-sized truck or suv too, to kind of open up uh, more rental opportunities so that being said let's go see what's out here the Coleman Light 1855 RB. And there's some things we like about this camper. There's a couple things that we don't like. Um, for the price, it's not too bad. Power, stabilizer jacks, fiberglass siding, uh, aluminum rims. You know, it has a cheaper Trailer King tires, but it does have the solid step system. And going inside, uh, the floor plan is one that we tend to like. You know, it has the Murphy bed up front uh, with the couch that is it's just okay uh, the fabric is actually like really slippery you kind of slide off it you got the dinette there um tv i guess is in an okay spot uh, one thing we did not like is just the lack of countertop space in this kitchen because they use such a big sink and a three burner stove top which i think is unnecessary in a camper this size there's just no room for like a coffee pot or anything like that it's a major turn off for us and I don't know, there's just something about this camper that just felt cheap. Um, you know, again, it's hard to show in a video, but just kind of the texture, the materials and things like that. That nah, just made us want to keep looking a little bit. Uh, bathroom back here, you know, it does have a lot of storage in the bathroom, which is nice. Um, toilet and the shower is okay size. You know, for the price point, it's not horrible. The floor plan's decent. Um, but I think we just kind of want to see what else is out there. Another Flagstaff E-Pro model. This is the 19FD. I like that it comes with a ladder. Seems like that is one option that is missing on a lot of campers nowadays. You know, it has the off-road tires on it, solid steps. And it is a Murphy bed. And I like that it has the couch with the kickouts on it. You got your wardrobes for some hanging clothes there. You got USBs on that side, 110s on that side. And then, you know, it's a little tight because this one does not have a slide out. But I kind of like that in one way. You know, it's just one less thing to go wrong. It makes the camper a little lighter. So your dinette would fold down into a bed. Not a big fan of the kitchen. There's just not a lot of counter space. Having that flip up countertop extender is nice though. Um, you know, TV is in an okay spot. I like rear bathrooms. And this one has a decent sized shower and pretty good counter around that uh, sink in the bathroom and then good size uh, medicine cabinet with additional storage in the back there. Just a little tight because it's lacking that slide out um, and it's about 29,000, so kind of at the top end of our budget. Um, we'll go see what else is out there. All right, this one is used, but to give you an example of what is out there, this is the Coleman 1608RB show you some things I like about it. Number one, you do have a power tongue jack with dual propane tanks. It is fiberglass siding with aluminum frame. You know, it kind of has that off-road wheel tire package. It has the solid steps. Inside here, you know, it does have the, I call it kind of the climb over bed. I like a more north-south facing bed so you can walk around it. There's no wardrobes, not a lot of place to put your clothes. It has a freestanding table here than the couch that would flip down to a bed. I actually like the counter space. It has a decent amount of counter space for a camper this size. I like that it has a framed in bathroom door. And it is one of those corner bathrooms on the smaller side, but when you get in, it's actually adequate. It's fine. So it's used, if it was new, it's interesting, but probably not one that we would pull the trigger on. 
So I've been asked if you can get a good deal at an RV show, and you can if you do your research and pay attention. We actually bought our 2400 at a RV show a couple years ago. So if you have a couple models that you are very interested in, do your research before, go online and take some screenshots of what their sale price is at the dealership online. Because we busted a dealership doing this a couple years ago. Let's say we were looking at this model. You know, you go to the RV show and they have the MSRP and the discount and then the sale price, 31,000. We found a dealership once that the day before the uh, RV show, it was actually 30,000. You get to the dealership, you get to the show, they bump all the prices up and you're actually gonna be paying more at the show than you would have at the dealership. Now, that might have just been a one-off. Um, all the deals we're seeing today do seem to be pretty close, if not cheaper than what I was seeing online before we came. So just do due diligence and you can find a good deal at a show. This is the Ozark 1900 TH, TH standing for toy hauler. So this would be like a couple's toy hauler, kind of a neat little setup here. Got a bedroom up front the decent little wardrobe and that's kind of your general kitchen living area so this would obviously fold down into a bed but then this is nice she got the uh, second bed coming down so it's kind of like having bunks uh, decent counter space on the kitchen but look at this you get a little deck obviously it folds down into a ramp for your toys and at $25,000 not a bad price This is the Coleman Lantern 18FQ on sale for 25,000. Kind of show you some things about this one that stand out. Number one, it's a budget camper, but it does have power stabilizer jacks. So that's interesting. Uh, single axle steel wheels. Um, you know, it does not have a solid step system, which is kind of a turnoff for us. It's a unique layout that actually feels very spacious and open. Um, I love the fact that it has both a couch and a dinette and the slides plenty deep so like I said it's fairly roomy uh, I'll show you the bathroom here kind of your basic bathroom a little tight you know the shower doesn't have any surround anything like that um, a mirror but no medicine cabinet one thing that I don't like about this camper is where you mount the TV so you pretty much mount the TV in the back here which is not in direct line of sight from either the couch. Uh, I suppose half the dinette you would have it, but then it's really far away from the bed. And that's another thing that I don't like is that it has the, uh, what I call the crawl over bed um, <clears throat> and no wardrobe space on either side. So not a lot of places to store clothes. Counter space is decent. And I like on a smaller camper, um, I don't mind when they put in a smaller sink to open up some space on the countertop, two burner stove top, a decent size fridge. Um, you know, it's a decent layout, it's open, it's roomy, but it just feels kind of cheap and it's kind of hard to show through the video, but just, you know, the material that they use and you can just tell that it's just not as solid of a camper when you walk through it. So we're gonna keep looking. Interesting little trailer here. This is a Happier Camper Comfort. They're $28,000, got that retro look to it. Have a cool little interior. Kind of neat. <laughs> this is a Forest River Salem FSX 169 RSK. And it has a unique floor plan that has us a little bit intrigued. Uh, starting out, you know, it has those old style steel steps that we're not a big fan of. All right, so you walk in, you know, obviously you have your kitchen here with a really good size wraparound dinette. This table, I really like that it's on a swivel. So you can kind of move it back and forth as needed. I'd be a little concerned how it's mounted here. To me, that is just uh, damage waiting to happen. So the kitchen here, again, when you don't have a lot of counter space, I like when they put in a smaller stove top. So two burner stove top, which is just fine. No oven, but that's okay. It frees up some space for some drawers. You got your microwave up here. Kitchen. Then it has one of these mid bathrooms, I guess you'd call it. Um, so in between the kitchen and the living room area. So, you know, you got your shower with a retractable door. Toilet off to the side there with your sink with a small amount of counter space, I guess, medicine cabinet. So this is the bedroom and it's a bedroom slide. So this bedroom has a ton of space in it for a camper this size. So the slide is pretty deep, got some storage above obviously. 
And look at all this room in front of the bed. It's just so nice to have room in your bedroom area to get changed and everything. And plenty of storage too. You know, I keep talking about taking a camper on longer trips and having multiple places to store your clothes is just so handy. A little countertop there and a place for a bedroom TV. So even though we really like this floor plan, at the end of the day, we thought this kitchen and dining room area was just a little too tight, uh, just not open enough. So we're gonna keep looking. Here we have a Coleman Rubicon 1608RB for 21,000. So you got the fiberglass siding, of course. I like that it has two propane tanks and a power tongue jack. Cause this, one, this one's only 20,000. You don't always see that in this price range. Uh, pass through Sora, just a little narrow, but not too bad. Um, again, with the off-road tires, stable steps. And this one just, it's just kind of squishy. Even though it has a slide, it's not a real deep slide. You know, it has a free floating table, but it just, it takes up so much room that you just kind of feel squished in this one. And there's no way to walk around the bed. It's a crawl over bed and no wardrobes on either side. You do have a shelf up front, but not a ton of place to store clothes. Uh, counter space is good for the kitchen. Uh, this is kind of cool. It's like frosted glass. It looks really nice. Decent storage. You know, you got plenty of drawers and place underneath the sink. Uh, it's just that this living area is just too tight for our liking. Now I do like that it has a framed in bathroom door. And here's the bathroom, kind of a tight corner bathroom. Here's one that we really like, but it kind of stretches the uh, budget camper category. So this is a No Boundaries 19.6, and it has a really unique layout that just really works. So it has the couch here, and then up front has a Murphy bed. So plenty of room, plenty of spots to sit. Um, you know, has a TV on a swivel, but I love that it has this countertop here um, with additional seating here. Kitchen, you know, it's got that corner shaped uh, countertop and I really like the round basin sink. You know, it seems like it gives you a lot of space, but it doesn't take up a lot of counter space, if that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> you know, you got the microwave down there. Bathroom in the corner here isn't a large bathroom, you know, kind of standard corner shower, but it does have a medicine cabinet and a pedestal style sink. Good size fridge and freezer. You know, it's just a little outside our budget right now. All right, I'll show you an example of what would be the true budget couples camper. Probably one of the cheapest ones we'll find at the show. Some of the dimensions here, I mean, it's nice and short. I mean, that's light, 2,900 pounds. But here's some of the things you get with a real budget camper. You know, single propane tank up front. It's gonna be obviously that uh, tin siding aluminum frame. You can see you're only gonna have one steel step going inside. You know, it has the crawl over bed up front. No wardrobe storage, just a little shelf on top. Um, small kitchen area. It is unique that it does have a uh, fireplace. That's actually kind of cool, but just when you're in here, you can just tell everything's just a little cheaper. I mean, these cushions already, that's a real soft foam that need to be upgraded. Free floating table, two burner stove top, uh, smaller fridge, standard high point microwave. Uh, bathroom, not a small bathroom for camper this size, but you know, you don't get any of this around, around the shower, plastic toilet. There's no mirror, no vanity, no extra sink. Storage is actually not too bad, but Coleman, uh, budget RV. So we came to the show to buy a new RV, but then we came across this. It's a 2021 Flagstaff 21 DS. And I've filmed these before in other videos, and I've always really liked this model. And taking a look at it. So you got the dinette, big dinette here, big U-shaped dinette, and that obviously folds on into a bed. And it has the Murphy bed, which we really like. And the second we walked into this one, we kind of fell in love with it. Uh, number one, Rockwoods, Flagstaff, they're kind of the same thing. Uh, they've always been a top-notch, high-quality brand. And really the only brand that I would consider buying used during the COVID years. And you can just tell when you get in this. I mean, the quality of everything is so much nicer than a lot of the other models that we were looking at. And even though this one is used, it's like brand new. If it was used, it was not used very much at all. Uh, you know, kind of got your standard corner bathroom, but 
you know, everything's a little nicer. You got the porcelain toilet and you got nice medicine cabinet and, you know, better fixtures on the sink. And this camper has so much storage. So you got storage over the toilet. This would be more like a pantry over here. But you could also take the shelves out and have hanging clothes in there too. We love what they did with the fridge. They have the wood paneling on it, so it just kind of blends in and looks really nice. Just looks a little more upscale. And that is a gas electric fridge. The dinette. I mean, even like the fabric they use, um, the cushions, just everything just feels higher quality. I'm not a huge fan of these style tables, but that's not that big of a deal. That'll actually flip down, it folds forward into a bed. But I like that it has, you know, the uh, drawers underneath versus sometimes you gotta go in through the top to get access to the storage. Just little touches like that are so nice. I like that it has all these storage cabinets above the dinette here. You know, you got the wardrobes on both sides of the bed, drawers, but look at this. You even have more wardrobe space here if you need it. So a camper like this, we were saying we'd have no problem doing several weeks in this. We're at that point where we're thinking about taking, you know, three week winter vacations down south. And I think this camper would do the trick just fine. And there's just so many nice little touches with this one like this. It has kickouts for the couch here and it has spots to put in little trays too. A lot of uh, charging ports here. You got two USB, you even have like a uh, cigarette lighter style. Uh, 110 and then on this side can't really see it, but there's more outlets over there You know the kitchen for something this size. This is only 21 feet long But you know you have the countertop extension with this corner style counter you have all this space here I love this little pop-up power supply station just a lot of nice touches. Oh I forgot to show this in the bathroom too it even has a fantastic fan and Whoever had this bought a couple nice little extra things too like uh, TPMS. So at the end of the day, even though we were looking for a new camper, we just fell in love with this. Um, and the price wasn't too bad. I wouldn't say it was the greatest deal in the world, you know, just for the year and the model, but because this one is in such nice shape, I mean, this thing literally is like brand new. So we pulled the trigger and we now own this camper. Okay, time for some post-show follow-up here. Now this is the second time that we bought an RV at a show. And overall, the experience has been pretty good for us. I do tend to find that the prices are a little cheaper at the show than they are usually at the dealership. And you can still negotiate off that show price. And having hundreds of campers in one place to compare back to back, I find it really helpful. Now, I've been asked what happens to the RV after you sign the deal at the show. In our case, they immediately put a sold sign on the camper and they locked it up. So that way it doesn't remain a demo at the show for the next couple of days with hundreds of more people walking through it. Then the dealer takes it back to their lot and you schedule a final walkthrough for a later date. Problem we have is that we're in Minnesota here and I bought this rig the first week of February. And for the off season, I tend to store our campers in our backyard and getting this new camper back there now is just not gonna happen. But that's okay since the dealer said that they could store it at their lot until the snow melts. And as far as rentals go, we bought this on a Friday. I put an ad out on Saturday and by Sunday we got our first booking for a week in June. So hopefully there's good demand for this kind of camper and we can start earning some good income with it. Now when we bought our grand design, we went straight from pickup at the dealer to a local campground to get that shakedown trip in as soon as possible. I think we're gonna do the same with this one and I'll share that experience as well. And we'll do a full tour video in the near future. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.